Let's move on to our next speaker this morning and we continue our dialogue on library and information science in Europe with Professor Dr. Angel Borrego. Professor Borrego is senior lecturer in our Department of Library and Information Science at the University of Barcelona. I'm happy to give the floor to Professor Borrego. Thank you, Luis. Uh, good morning. Well, um, one year ago, when we started preparing this seminar, I suggested that it might be a good idea to conduct a study in order to describe the current situation of LIS education in Europe. And I was um, foolish enough to volunteer to carry the study myself. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't aware of the trouble I was getting into. Um, today, anyway, I will present you the results of this study, which is basically the result of visiting the websites of the nearly 300 institutions that deliver LIS-related programs in Europe now. Uh, my aim is to provide you with an overview that I hope will be useful to contextualize the roundtable that is coming next with representatives from different countries. Um, there were five initial questions that guided the study. First, I wanted to quantify how many schools and departments deliver LIS education in Europe now. I thought it would also be interesting to classify these schools and departments by disciplines. I also wanted to get some data about the size of these schools and departments, and by size I basically mean the number of faculty, the number of staff. I wanted to identify any experience of domestic and especially international collaboration between these schools and departments. And last, but by no means least, I was interested in the characteristics of the undergraduate and the graduate programs that these institutions deliver. So how did I collect the data? Uh, first, in order to identify the population of LIS uh, educational programs delivered in Europe, I used this guide that was published by IFLA, maybe some of you know it, uh, eight years ago in 2007. And then, based on the directory, I compile all the data by visiting the websites of 290 institutions that are included in the guide. To be honest, at first I considered sending a questionnaire to each of these schools or departments, but unfortunately I ran out of time. So this presentation aims to uh, give you an overview of the knowledge, but also the, the perceptions of the subjective impressions gathered by someone who surfs the internet, compiling information about LIS programs in Europe. Uh, yeah, one clarification about the scope of the study. When I say Europe, actually I mean the 28 countries that are members of the European Union. Um, a couple of limitations I have faced when conducting the study. There are probably many more, but I think these are the most obvious ones. Uh, the first problem was the linguistic diversity of the countries involved. I have visited websites in I don't know how many languages. So at this point, I want to give a special thanks to Google Translate. Uh, I mean, I can understand English and most Romance languages, Spanish, obviously, Catalan, French, Italian, even Portuguese. But to be honest, I'm completely lost in Dutch, Czech, German, Greek, Hungarian, Swedish, Finnish, and so on. It is true that many schools and departments have uh, an English website, but usually this is not a full translation of the website, but just a brief description of the school or department. Um, information about degrees, for instance, is usually targeted to local students, and um, very frequently is just provided in the local language. So as a result, it is possible that some of the examples that I have selected for this presentation are not the most appropriate for the point I want to make, or maybe I have jumped to wrong conclusions based on these examples. But I have chosen them because they are in English or they are in another language I can't understand. But I would like to stress that this is a limitation of this study. At the end of the presentation, I will be happy to listen to your views, your comments, because obviously you know the situation in your country is much better than I do. And po possibly you will be able to clear up any misunderstandings. Well, the second limitation is not really a limitation. It's a characteristic of the landscape I was trying to describe. Uh, 
This characteristic is the fragmentation of the LIS community in different faculties, schools, departments, institutes, and so on. I will come back to this point later, but first let's start with some results, some quantitative results. According to the IFLA guide, uh, there are 200, there were in 2007, 283 educational centers in 26 European countries. There were just two small countries, uh, Cyprus and Luxembourg, with no LIS education. However, while compiling the information, I decided to remove 63 institutions for different reasons. Uh, some of the institutions included in the IFLA guide are professional associations of national libraries that offer short courses addressed to active professionals. Uh, some institutions seem to have dropped their degrees in LIS. For instance, the London Metropolitan University used to offer a master's degree in information services management, which seems to have been discontinued. Uh, some institutions have merged since the publication of the IFLA guide. That was especially true in France, where there were several mergers of universities. Um, for classification purposes, when two uh, schools or departments in a single university were offering LIS-related education, just the one closer to LIS was used for classification purposes. I will show you some examples afterwards. So finally, I compile information about 220 institutions from 26 countries with a global population of some 500 million people. Well, as you can see at the bottom in the last row, uh, LIS programs are taught both at the undergraduate and at the graduate level. But there is a high tendency to offer bachelor degrees in LIS. So 88% of the institutions offer undergraduate degrees, but just 65% offer master degrees. The only major exception to this rule is the United Kingdom, where according to the IFLA guide, there were 15 departments delivering LIS programs, and all of them offer master degrees, but just nine offer undergraduate degrees. Uh, if we consider that 14 countries that have a population of less than 10 million people, we can see that most of these countries, 11 of these 14 countries, have between one and three departments offering LIS programs. The main exception is Hungary, with are 10 universities delivering LIS programs, and all of them deliver undergraduate degrees. A year and a half, we hosted here in this very school a Bocats conference, maybe some of you attended it. There was a session on LIS education, and I remember a presentation by a Hungarian professor explaining the excessive offer of LIS programs in that country. Another exception, but to a much lesser extent, is that of Sweden, where there are seven universities delivering LIS-related education. But in that case, just four of these universities deliver undergraduate degrees. I have classified as middle-sized countries those with a population between 10 and 20 million inhabitants. In this group, the case of Belgium is striking has 11 institutions offering LIS-related education. Well, this situation is due to the complexity of the Belgium's undergraduate educational system, where in addition to universities, there are high schools, haute school in, in French, that offer vocational degrees. So there were several of these high schools offering vocational degrees in librarianship. And something similar happens in the Netherlands. Uh, well, the second country in this group is the Czech Republic. In this case, the explanation is completely different. The reason for the seven universities in the Czech Republic offering LIS-related education is that there are, I think at least, five universities delivering degrees in archival studies, in archivism. The remaining six countries can be considered big. The smallest country in this group is Poland, with a population of more than 38 million people. And the biggest is Germany, with more than 80 million. Um, in this group of countries, the most surprising case is that of Italy, where according to the IFLA guide, there are 58 institutions offering LIS-related programs. This situation is caused by a large number of universities that offer degrees in cultural heritage, beni uh, culturali in Italian, and these degrees frequently have some, some kind of a specialization in LIS. I will come back to this point later. Uh, the case of France is also notable. There are 
31 institutions offering LIS programs. In this case, the figure is motivated by a large number of universities that deliver degrees in information and communication. Information and communication. I will also explain that in more detail later. In Spain, there are 15 universities delivering LIS programs. The number is similar to that of the United Kingdom or Germany, we have, but we have to bear in mind that the Spanish population is much smaller. In Spain, we have about 44, 45 million people. In the United Kingdom, there are 63 million people. In Germany, more than 80 million. So there's probably an over-representation of the Spanish universities in this month. The next step in the analysis was to classify its school or department delivering LIS education in one of these eight categories that were borrowed from a previous study conducted in the United States by the author that you have at the bottom. This morning in Blaise Cronin's presentation, Professor Cronin's presentation, we have seen the results for the United States. The approach is slightly different because uh, here it was classifying these uh, departments, no individual lectures. But this classification was difficult again. In some cases, LIS programs depend on the faculty, sometimes they depend on the department, sometimes they depend on a department inside a bigger faculty, sometimes they depend on an institute. Um, the most specific instance was used when, when possible. So for instance, a degree delivered at the School of Social Sciences, Department of Information Science, was classified in library and information. But a similar degree in a School of Social Sciences and the no specific department was classified in social and behavioral. And something else I need to clarify, the, the category library information was used only for those departments in the school that specializes specifically in this field. Well, there was a merge between two disciplines, the other one was used for classification purposes. So for instance, a department of information and communication was classified in communication. Obviously, other criteria could be used and results would be at least slightly different, but these are the criteria you have used. And these are the results. Well, as you can see, most LIS programs, about 32%, are delivered by schools or departments that can be classified under the heading humanities. Actually, this figure is misleading. I will explain why in a minute. About 28% sorry, are classified in library and information, 15% in communication, 9% in computer science, and so on. And there are a few examples of schools and departments that can be classified in education, management and policy, science and engineering, social and behavioral. And the final known category was used for very generic names, such as a school of social sciences and humanities. Well, let's just start with the case of a schools or departments classified in humanities. For this part of the presentation, I will refer to undergraduate programs, and afterwards I will make some comment about postgraduate degrees. Um, as we have seen before, most LIS programs are delivered by schools or departments that can be classified in the field of humanities. But this figure, as I was saying before, is a little bit misleading. If we look more closely at the characteristic of these 70 schools and departments, we observe that most of them, 49, are faculties of language, philosophy, and related disciplines in Italian universities that deliver degrees in cultural heritage, Bene culturale. And frequently, these degrees some can, some, they, they have a specialization, let's say, in arts history, performing arts, uh, archaeology, and sometimes library and information science. But these uh, specializations are very limited regarding the number of credits taken by the students. And usually it's not a general training in librarianship, but in line with the characteristics of the degree, these are usually courses on archives, heritage libraries, and things like that. I will show you an example. The University of Bologna in Italy offers a three-year undergraduate degree in cultural heritage. There are many other examples. I have chosen this one because the website is in English. That's the only reason. Um, they offer some courses in library and information science, what you can see here at the top, Ambito Archivistico e Biblioteconomico. However, as you can see, the number of credits that can be taken by, by the student is very limited. We're talking about 12 credits when a full-time student is expected to register for 60 credits per year. 
So it's uh, and these 12 credits are just about a course on archive administration and history of archives. So this is the reason that explains the large number of universities in Italy delivering LIS education according to the EFLA guide. However, it's possible to find examples of other degrees in LIS delivered by schools or faculties in the field of humanities. Here you have several examples of degrees in librarianship, uh, archives and libraries management, information and documentation sciences delivered by faculties of philosophy, languages, humanities, and so on. Well, if we go back to Italy for a minute, another reason that explains a large number of, of institutions delivering LIS programs is that there were nearly 20 regional archives uh, that have uh, schools of archivism, paleography, diplomatics offering degrees in these topics. Here is an example of uh, uh, a school of archivism at the Regional Archive in Venice. Professional training in the field of archives is sometimes separated from that of librarianship, especially in Central and Eastern Europe. Well, there are several universities that deliver degrees in archives of archival sciences separated from those in librarianship. This is an example. Czech Republic, Masaryk University, Faculty of Arts. There is a department of Czech Literature and Library Studies delivering a degree in Information and Library Studies, but at the same time, there is a department of History and Archives delivering a different degree in Archival Studies. And there are many other examples. That's uh, still in the Czech Republic, Charles University in Prague, different departments in the same faculty delivering degrees in librarianship on archives. So still another example in Hungary. And this is another example of a bachelor in archival studies delivered at the uh, high school in Potsdam in Germany. Well, let's move now to the case of communication. Well, the merge of departments uh, specializing in information and communication is quite useful, especially in France, where there were many degrees in information and communication, departments in, of information and communication. And what there were more than 20 degrees in France uh, that combined the terms information and communication in their titles. To describe these degrees, I need to describe very, very briefly how the higher education system works in France. Well, in France, uh, undergraduate degrees last three years, licence, as you can see here in yellow at the bottom. But in addition, universities also deliver what they call DUTs, that's a translation would be something like university degree in technology or university degree in science and technology. These degrees last two years and can be supplemented with a vocational degree, a professional degree, a licence professionnelle, the last one single year. Let's start with three-year undergraduate degrees, licence. This is an example of a degree, an undergraduate, a three-year undergraduate degree in information and communication delivered at the University Paul Ballerino, far away from here in the south of France, in Montpellier. Well, this is part of the study program, the description of the degree. Uh, if you look at the, 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 the study plan, you will realize that most of the courses are about communication, languages, public relations. So this is a little bit far away from what most of us would consider a degree in librarianship or in information science or in library and information science. Actually, most of these degrees in information and communication are uh, much closer to journalism, mass media, public relations, and so on. Still another example, not in France, but in another French-speaking country, in Belgium. This is an undergraduate degree at uh, the School of Communication, uh, Catholic University in Louvain. Uh, well, the description is in French, but you can see the job opportunities uh, advertised and, uh, for, for students who enroll in these programs. Most of these employment opportunities are in the field of mass media, journalism, public relations, and so on. So actually, if we want to find uh, training 
more closely related to library and information science in France, usually we have to turn to these professional degrees, these licence professionnelles, these vocational degrees I mentioned before, the last one single year. These are one year specializations for the students who have two year, uh, two year academic background or even active professional is what you have on the right on the slide. That's a description of the target of students for this for this degree. This is a professional degree in archive and library management. I have chosen this example because I think it's interesting. At the University of Aix Marseille, they have an Institute of Technology. And this Institute of Technology offers a uh, two-year degree in information and communication. Again, the description is in, in French, but I think you can guess that the, it's oriented towards the students who want to work in the field of libraries, publishing, bookshops, and so on. However, the same university has a school of journalism and communication that offers another degree in information and communication. And their second degree, uh, you don't have the description here, but it's much closer to journalism, mass media, and so on. So, the reason that explains the large number of LIS degrees in France that we saw previously in the map is that probably the IFLA guide includes many degrees in information and communication that actually are much closer to journalism, communication science than to LIS. However, it's possible to find degrees that merge to this topic. This is a degree in Austria, a degree in undergraduate degree in information, media and communication and they offer job opportunities, employment opportunities in information management, journalism and media, online businesses, and also library management, documentation management, and so on. Computer science. About 9% of the schools and departments could be classified in the field of computer science. It's also quite different from those we saw previously in a slide by Professor Cronin. Um, for instance, in Germany, uh, well, so far I have said some words in Italian and French, but don't worry because I do not intend to read this in German. Uh, according to Google Translate, that means something like Institute for Information Management and Language Technology. Uh, that's at the University of Hildesheim, but there were other examples in Dusseldorf, for instance, of this very merge. But this is a word cloud they have on their website that explains the teaching and research interest of this institute. You see that there is a mix of topics, useful topics in LIS, such as information seeking, information retrieval, open access, and other topics in language technology, machine translation, and so on. Uh, Hungary. In Hungary, there were many degrees that combined the terms informatics and library science. Here you have some examples. Institute of Informatics and Library Science, Information Technology Librarian, Informatics Librarian Program. To be honest, I think some of these names are a little bit misleading. Actually, for instance, if you read the description of the last program, Informatics Librarian Program, actually this program doesn't really, in my opinion, doesn't focus really on computer science. Uh, it's much more traditional degree in librarianship, which offers a specializations, for instance, in a school libraries, which actually makes sense because this course, this program is delivered at a teacher training college, so it probably makes sense that they deliver uh, some specialization in the school libraries. Uh, well, it's an interesting partnership at the University of Porto in Portugal, a degree in information management offered in partnership by a faculty of Humanities, Languages, and a Faculty of Engineering, offering together a joint degree. From a quantitative point of view, I think the closest relationship between uh, computer science and information science is found in the United Kingdom. Of the 15 departments that we identified in the United Kingdom through the IFLA guide, six of them use the, the term computing or computer in their names. Here you have the list. Well, finally, as I said before, there were really few examples of departments in the school that can be classified in education, management and policy, science and engineering, social and behavioral. I have chosen just one single example 
of uh, degree in information management that is delivered by the School or Institute of Statistics and Information Management at the uni New University in Lisbon. This is an undergraduate degree that combines courses in business management, social sciences, computer sciences, mathematics and statistics. And the aim is to train students who are expected to work in information management in different business sectors. Uh, businesses such as uh, banking, insurances, telecom, health, and so on. Well, finally, I will discuss, discuss briefly uh, the main characteristics of some of the degrees delivered by uh, schools or departments that are more closely related to the core of the discipline. I mean, those whose name refer exclusively to library and information. There were 62 of these departments. Um, most of these departments offer what we could consider traditional degrees in librarianship and library and information science. It's one single example. This is a, a bachelor, a, uh, sorry, a, a bachelor if a librarian information specialist that is delivered in Belgium. This is a traditional program in library science that uh, it's target to students who want to work in traditional roles such as librarians, cataloger, and also in more innovative profiles such as data scientists, uh, information architects, and so on. There were many examples. I have chosen this one because in the, on the website they have this. Maybe you can say it very well. But I think this describes quite well the four areas that are common to most undergraduate degrees in LIS. Uh, the people, the department that is responsible for the program say that they try to provide the, student, the students with uh, training in, in four areas. In general culture, they try to provide students with a general culture background. That happens in many LIS programs, have courses on literature, for instance, history, sociology. Uh, technology, obviously, most LIS programs include courses on computer sciences. Practical education, most LIS degrees include uh, work placement, traineeships. Sometimes the students spend one semester, even a whole year, doing a, a work placement. And foreign languages, most LIS degrees include courses of English, but for instance, in Central and Eastern Europe, it's quite frequent to find in LIS degrees courses of German, for instance. Well, this is an example in Belgium. I have moved to Finland. Yes, because the description was in English. This is a description of a degree in library and information services at this university in Finland. Well, the characteristics are the same. The stress, the importance of knowledge of literature, this general culture background we mentioned before, computer skills, a study module available in English. You can follow one uh, semester in English. Award placement, the last 30 credits, that's one semester doing a word placement. So basically, the main characteristics are the same. There are other approaches, obviously. Uh, for instance, this is in Cologne in Germany. They offer an undergraduate degree in applied information science. This is much more oriented towards business information management. That, that would be closer to the previous degree we saw in, 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 in Lisbon, in Portugal. Uh, uh, for uh, information management in the business sector. Actually, in this degree, I think they offer uh, specializations in e business, business intelligence, and so on. But again, there are completely different approaches. This is uh, an undergraduate degree in music librarianship in Italy. Well, so far, I have just uh, referred to undergraduate programs. I don't have much time left, but I would like to make some comments on postgraduate education. Well, when analyzing the master programs delivered by the schools or departments that were identified through the IFLA guide, I think one of the first notable characteristic is the fact that most degrees have very, very generic names. Frequently, master degrees serve titles with undergraduate degrees delivered at the same university, which makes it very difficult to distinguish between them. This is uh, a list of, no, a non-exhaustive list of examples. I have, actually, I have chosen examples by countries in alphabetical order. 
of universities that offer undergraduate and graduate programs in LIS that serve the same or a very similar name. So, as a result, it is very difficult to know where the differences in any are, if, any, if there are any differences where, where they are, and it is difficult to know what is the target public of these degrees. I mean, it's not obvious whether these postgraduate degree programs are designed for students with a previous LIS background or they are designed for students with a different background. In some cases, uh, it seems obvious that the students are expected to follow both degrees. This is in Brussels. This is part of the description of the undergraduate degree. Say, so, well, after a bachelor in information and communication, you are expected to follow a master's in information and communication to be able to find a job in these fields. However, this is a completely different approach. In Cologne, in Germany, this is part of a leaflet advertising a master's in library and information science, which is open to graduates of any academic discipline. Because the girl seems to be thinking, oh, hey, I have finished a bachelor's degree, what can I do? Well, a possible option would be a master's in library and information science. Still another example in Copenhagen, a master's degree for those with a degree in LIS or an equivalent background. So the classical question about whether LIS education should be offered at the undergraduate or at the graduate level is still open. There are different approaches in, the uni in European universities, and at one single university you can find an undergraduate degree in LIS and a graduate degree in LIS, and you don't really know where the difference is. Uh, there were more than 200 postgraduate degrees, I haven't quantified them, but I have tried to classify them. I think most degrees can be classified in these six areas. Uh, well, as I said before, as we have just seen, there are general postgraduate degrees in LIS, Library and Information Management, Knowledge Management, and so on. Master's degrees in Archival Sciences, Archival Studies, uh, and so on in those universities or those places where there are undergraduate degrees in information and communication, there are also master's degrees in information and communication. Then there is a certain number of degrees in the field of digital curation, digital libraries, uh, digital information, so on. Business information management, business information services, business intelligence, these are examples of master's names, master's titles. And finally, there is also a new line of master's degrees in big data, advanced analytics, data analytics, statistics and information management, data mining, and so on. I have found very, very few examples of domestic or international collaboration. There are just very, very few joint degrees delivered by two or more institutions. At the national level, we have a Master of Archives, which is delivered by, in partnership by four Belgian universities. And here in Barcelona, in this school, we offer a couple of master degrees in partnership with other local universities. At the international level, we have a former Erasmus Mundus program, which is delivered in partnership by Italian University in Estonia and the University of Parma in Italy. And then the Berlin School of Library and Information Science also offers some degrees in partnership with Copenhagen and King's College in London. Well, still at the level of international collaboration, there are a couple of examples of summer schools uh, organized by European schools in partnership with American schools of LIS or information science. For instance, on the left you have uh, uh, part of the brochure of uh, summer school, which is organized in partnership by the, the, the uh, LIS school in Copenhagen, in partnership with the University of Washington in the U.S. And on the right, you have, well, this is from the website of the Charles University in Prague, with just last week finished uh, summer school they organized in partnership with the University of North Carolina. So, some conclusions just to finish. My first conclusion was that there is no common European approach to LIS education. There are very, very, very completely different orientation, orientations of training depending on the country. 
I, I don't know if the second conclusion is a consequence of the first one. Maybe because of this heterogeneity, there are very, very few examples or experience of international or even domestic collaboration. There are no degrees offered in partnership. Uh, most undergraduate degrees in librarianship combine a general culture background with courses in technology, languages, and practical training. And there are a certain line of undergraduate degrees in the field of business information management. I've showed you a couple of examples. In my opinion, there are no clear differences between undergraduate and graduate programs. They have very frequently very, very similar names. I think they lack a specific target audiences. Um, in addition to this, postgraduate programs in librarianship or archive studies, most programs revolve around digital curation, business information services, and big data and data analytics. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. As I said before, we'll be happy to listen to your comments and questions. <laughs>